So it is that time of the week and we are back for some more championship score predictions. Coming up this week, it's the reversal of the opening day fixtures that we had going on. And on the opening day, we had 37 goals scored in the championship. So here's hoping that this weekend will be just as entertaining. As always, all this weekend's fixtures will be in the description down below so that you guys can easily go ahead and make your score predictions. And before we do hop into anything, I want to give a shout out to our sponsors over at OneFootball. As always, their link will be in the top line of the description down below. The championship table at the moment is absolutely mental. There's three point seven separating 7th from 2nd in the table at the moment and with some of the games that we got going on at the top of the championship a lot could be flipped around come the end of this weekend so over on the one football app you can go ahead and keep up to date with all the games that are going on this weekend get live updates to your phone if you are heading out to any of the matches this weekend and like I said I think it'll be a good one so one football the place to be but without any further ado let's hop into my score predictions so starting out with the game going on tonight which sees Hull going up against Swansea now Hull currently find themselves on the worst run of form in the championship they've lost their last four games at the KCOM and they've just been tumbling down the table. They're going up against the Swansea side though who they themselves aren't at their best at the moment. They've let themselves slide down the table and are now six points off the top six. It was only a few weeks ago when they were in touching distance but now there is a little bit of a gap forming and looking at some of Swansea's games recently, quite good opportunities they've had to close that gap on the top six but they've not taken full advantage. The game they had in midweek, a goalless draw against QPR, another opportunity missing that one. They didn't have a shot on target in that game and have just looked a little bit clunky and frustrating going forward recently. Hull City are conceding goals like there's no tomorrow really. They conceded three in midweek against Blackburn, three late goals in that one. Their last game at the KCOM, they conceded five against Brentford. This is the one that's on TV tonight though and I've got a bit of a feeling that it's not going to be a classic and although I would like it to be a good game with a load of goals and things like that, I feel like Hull will want to shut up shop and look to improve their defensive record. And I'm not, I think that Swansea could be frustrated. I'm actually going to say that this one's going to end as a goalless draw. FIFA's going to say it'll be 1-1. I hope I'm wrong about that one, but I just don't think it'll be a great game. And then there's the early kickoff on Saturday. We see West Brom going up against Nottingham Forest. Forest do have the chance to go into the top two this weekend if they do win and results go their way. Forest in midweek, though, slipping up against Charlton, losing that one by one goal to nil. Sabri Lamucci made the decision to make quite a few changes to that one, and in the end, that's come back to bite them. And it has been those sorts of games, traditionally, which have come back to haunt Forest at the end of the season because their record against top six sides is actually been very good so far this season. I believe the only game that they've lost against the top six side so far this season was on the opening day against West Brom. West Brom walked away from the city ground with a 2-1 away victory. That one thanks to two pretty dodgy mistakes from Muric, who was the goalkeeper there at the time. But uh, West Brom have really found their flow back in the championship after they themselves went on a bit of a dodgy run. They've won their last three matches and Callum Robinson I think has made a real difference to that attacking lineup. I think that him, Pereira and Kravinovic are all really linking up excellently at the moment. So a lot of attacking in Tank coming in this one for West Brom. Their last two performances especially, I've been really impressed watching them play, but Forrest have it in them to frustrate these sides at the top of the table, and I feel like they may go and do this against West Brom. If they're back at full strength for this one, I'm going to go for a 1-1 draw in that game. I don't think there'll be all too much in it. With Thief saying, they'll be one nil Forest. Another side who could climb into the top two this weekend is Brentford. Once again, if they win and results go their way, the championship table at the top at the moment is absolutely bonkers. But they're going up against this Birmingham side who have found a bit of flow back recently. Scott Hogan really is the man. Birmingham did win in midweek thanks to another Scott Hogan goal. That's now 3-3 three three for him in the league so far. And um, I mean, I'll, I'll be interested to see how many goals he finishes the season on, but seem to have his confidence back now. And he's looking like the Scott Hogan of all that poach around the box who can play off defenders shoulders obviously Brentford bring a bit of a different task to what Birmingham were faced with in midweek against Barnsley Brentford in midweek drew 1-1 with Leeds United where to be honest I didn't think that Brentford were particularly at their best in that one obviously took the lead through Ben Rama after a Kiko Casilla mistake but then David Rea a little bit weak for a corner and Liam Cooper leveled things up and they couldn't really get all too much going moving forward it wasn't like the uh, fully flowing performance that we come to expect from Brentford but Leeds play quite well in that one back up against against this Birmingham side it's a good chance for Brentford to get back to winning ways but Birmingham like I said have had an upwards trajectory in form recently but I feel like with that forward three they may just about edge through this one I'm going to go 2-1 Brentford with Thief saying it'll just be 1-0 Brentford next up we then got Cardiff going up against Wigan Cardiff currently on one of the best runs of form in the championship they're unbeaten in their last six matches now they won fantastically in midweek putting three goals past Huddersfield and still hold sort of an outside chance of making it into the top six come the end of the season they're only four points off the playoffs and 
with quite a few of the top six playing each other this weekend, it could be a decent opportunity for them to go ahead and narrow that gap back down. They're going up against this Wigan side who currently are four points away from survival. Stoke City, the closest side to them at the moment. Now, Wigan in midweek had a 2-2 draw against Middlesbrough. You felt as though that was a bit of an opportunity missed for that one. They were leading for quite a bit of the game. Then Che Dunkley got sent off. Lewis Wing scored a couple of belters. They did get back into it. Finishes a 2-2 draw. But yeah, those are the sort of games that Wigan need to be winning if they do want to avoid the drop. And obviously with Stoke losing as well, it was a bit of an opportunity missed to bridge that gap a little bit more. But uh, for this one, I wouldn't be at all surprised to see sort of Wigan taking the lead and then Cardiff having a bit of a comeback in this one. Cardiff away with the way they're playing at the moment isn't the ideal fixture for Wigan. And for a score prediction, I think I am edging towards Cardiff. I'm going to go 2-1 in this game with Thieves in. It'll be 2-0 no Wigan. Then we got Charlton going up against Blackburn. Both sides winning in midweek. Fantastic three points for each of them. Charlton beating Forrest by one goal to nil. Not a lot of people saw that one coming, but a brilliantly worked goal in from the left-hand side. Naby Sar with a wonderful assist on his left foot, bending cross into Lyle Taylor, and he was able to head in for the only goal of the game in that one. And uh, like I say, bridges a gap between themselves and the bottom three. And considering it was away from home as well, to get back at the value for this one, where they are unbeaten in their last three matches, will be a good omen. But up against Blackburn will be no easy test. Blackburn quite similar to Cardiff, one of those sides who still has an outside possibility of reaching it into the top six. And like I said, with a lot of the top six playing each other, it's a good chance for Blackburn to go ahead and close that gap if they can pick up all three points in this one. Blackburn were excellent in midweek, beating Hull by three goals. Now, it took them a bit, quite, a, quite a while to break the deadlock in that one, but when they eventually did put three goals past them, you know, they could have been one nil up after about 10 seconds in that game. But the goal that Adam Armstrong scored, oh my God, he just keeps getting better week to week. With all the injuries that Blackburn have accumulated recently, it doesn't seem to be actually affecting them all too much. Adam Armstrong with, the, with his ninth goal of the season in that game. I've got the feeling that there could be quite a few goals scored in this one as well. I think it's going to be quite an open game. And for a score prediction, I'm going to go for a 2-2 draw. Charlton decent at home, but Blackburn playing quite well at the moment. FIFA said it's going to be a bold nil nil and then we got Derby going up against Huddersfield. Now, Derby, despite losing in midweek against Bristol City, I actually thought played pretty well. They found themselves 2-0 down at half-time, despite, like I said, playing some decent football in that half. It was just that defending crosses coming into the box seemed to be a bit of a weakness. Bristol City did well in isolating their fullbacks in wide areas. And then going into the second half, Bristol City made it 3-0. It looked like the game had been put to bed. But Derby, to be fair to them, tried to spark a comeback. They made it 3-2 and were throwing absolutely everything at Bristol City late on, trying to get the equaliser, but they just wouldn't fall for them. So, like I said, despite losing, I actually thought play pretty well. Huddersfield in midweek had a bit of a disaster, losing 3-0 at home against Cardiff. The best way I can describe Huddersfield at the moment would be sort of inconsistent, a bit erratic really. In their last four matches, they've won two and lost two. And really up and down in terms of their levels, we don't quite know what to expect from them. But with Derby back at home in this one, I'd have to edge towards them as being the favourites. And for a score prediction, I think I'm going to back Derby for a 2-0 in this game. With Thieves saying, it'll be 2-0 Huddersfield. And then we got Fulham going up against Barnsley. If you'd have shown me the league table now, about two months ago or something, I probably wouldn't have believed you because I didn't think that Fulham had it in their locker to be as consistent as they have been lately. They have had quite a favourable run in, but or unbeaten in their last eight matches. Now, in midweek, Drew against Millwall. Bit of a frustrating one. Mitrovic did get his 21st goal of the season, which is an absolute joke, but in the end, finishing as a draw, Millwall actually got quite unlucky in that one as they did miss a penalty. But going up against this Barnsley side, another good chance for Fulham to be getting back to winning ways. If we think back to earlier on this season, Barnsley did actually beat Fulham on the opening day, and it was probably Barnsley's one of their best, if not their best, performance of the season. 1-0 victory at Oakwell. They played absolutely brilliantly, targeting Fulham in wide areas with their fast wingers at the time but since then I think both clubs have gone in opposite directions really. Barnsley obviously lost again in midweek 1-0 against Birmingham. Away at Fulham at Craven Cottage isn't going to be much easier. Interestingly enough though looking at Fulham's fixture running between now and the end of the season I think they've got a really tough one compared to the rest of the top six. They still need to play every other side in the top six and like I said I think it'll be a difficult one for Fulham so they need to take full advantage of these sort of fixtures and I think they may just do that for a score prediction, I'm going to go 3-0 Fulham. I think it may be a bit of a comfortable one for them in this one. With FIFA saying, it'll be 2-0. Theoretically, Leeds could be in 7th after this weekend. And as unlikely as that is, as it would take Bristol City winning 7-0 in this match and everyone else below Leeds to win this weekend, it could happen. And it just goes to show the state that Leeds have got themselves into. Although, saying that, in midweek against Brentford, I actually thought they played really well, to be honest with you. And it's the, it shows the difference that Calvin Phillips makes on this team. Having back him back in the starting 11 for the foreseeable future... He's going to be absolutely massive for them because 
I can't go on to say how much they missed him recently. And like I said, in that game against Brentford, obviously the Kiko Casilla mistake, which let Brentford take the lead early on in that one. They got back into it thanks to a goalkeeper mistake from David Ray. And then from the non, I thought with the better team, and to be honest, probably should have gone to pick up all three points from that one. They are going up against this Bristol City side, though, who can be a really tricky one to go up against. They'll be riding high on confidence at the moment with the way that they're playing at the moment, how many points they've accumulated over their last few fixtures. They beat Derby 3 2 in quite dramatic circumstances in midweek as well. And having won five of their last six matches, I think they really will give Leeds a run for their money in this one. It's a difficult one because I, I can't see Leeds keeping a clean sheet, but I've got a bit of a gut feeling that they may turn their fortunes around in this one. And for a score prediction, I'm gonna go 2 1 Leeds, although I'm not too confident in saying that. But I've got a bit of a feeling about them this week, and I'll say 2 1 Leeds. Thief is gonna say 2 0 Bristol City. It's a weird one because whenever I seem to predict Bristol City to lose, they always end up winning. So, a tricky game to call this one. And then we got Middlesbrough going up against Luton. Luton did manage to lift themselves off the bottom of the championship, beating Sheffield Wednesday in midweek by one goal to nil. They almost got off to the perfect start in that game, having been awarded the penalty after about 15 seconds, but they couldn't convert that one. After that, they continued to create chances, and eventually Collins did get the goal, which went on to win the game for them. And like I said, it did lift them off the bottom of the championship, but they've still got a real mountain to climb for the 14 games that are left of this season. They're going up against this Burrow side, who aren't playing bad at the moment. They're actually playing some really decent football going forward. It's just they're not winning all too many matches. They've drawn three out of their last five now. In midweek, they had a 2-2 draw against 10-man Wigan Athletic. Lewis Wing scoring two bangs in that one. Like we say quite often, really, Lewis Wing does not score tap-ins. If we remember back to the opening day of the season, this was an absolutely cracking match between these two. It finishes a 3-3 draw and was probably one of the most enthralling games that we've seen so far this season. I hope this one follows a similar pattern and to be honest, I think I can see quite a few goals being scored. For a score prediction, I think Burrow may just get back to winning ways. I'm going to go 3-2 Burr in that game. Luton could really do with something from this one, but Middlesbrough at the Riverside have been decent lately. I'm going to say 3-2. FIFA's going to go 1-0 Luton. And then we got North End going up against Millwall. Preston currently sat in the top six, but Bristol City just won't go away at the moment, and it is so close in between the top seven. There really is nothing in it, so three points in this one would be massive for us, especially given some of the fixtures that Preston have got coming up. Our next two matches are at home. we got Millwall, and then we're up against Hull next week. Then after that, we got two away matches against Fulham and West Brom so if we're going to drop maybe a few points on the road it would be a massive booster to us if we can win our next two home matches but up against Millwall it's going to be a tricky one midweek I thought they played quite well against Fulham and we were unlucky not to win that game really Jed Wallace had the chance to seal the three points and as he is normally so reliable from the spot he actually blazed that penalty over the crossbar pressed in midweek picking up another victory away from home I don't know what's happened to us at the start of the season we were really struggling away but lately have picked up our away from winning our last three matches on the road in that game to be honest first off we weren't great and we were probably quite lucky to still be in the game actually two excellent saves from Declan Rudd but for the second half we managed to change things around a little bit the introduction of David Nugent I thought had a real impact on the game Paul Gallagher also coming on as well and we ended up winning by two goals to nil but Ben Davis at the back with an absolutely colossal performance everything coming into the box he was heading away one last ditch tackle which he absolutely timed to perfection it really was the ultimate performance from Ben Davis in that one and we're going to need to have a real masterclass between Ben Davis and Barr in this one if we are going to limit Millwall. For a score prediction I feel like they may come to Deepdale and look to frustrate us quite similar to how the game against Swansea panned out a couple weeks ago and I'd love to win this one but I feel like Millwall may want to disrupt our flow a little bit. I'm going to go for a 1-1 draw in that game and hope I'm proved wrong. Thieves is going to say it's going to be 2-0 Millwall. Next up we then got QPR going up against Stoke. Obviously I was at Stoke in midweek and to be honest I thought they played pretty well, especially in the first half of that one against Preston. And like I was saying before, if it wasn't for a couple of good saves from Declan Rudd, they could have found themselves at least two goals up at half time. And I've watched Preston play against quite a few of the teams at the bottom lately. You know, we were playing against Wigan the other week and Barnsley a few weeks before that. And I have to say that in terms of performance levels and how teams look on the ball with and without possession, I do think Stoke are quite a bit better than Wigan and Barnsley. And so that should give them the platform to continue to build for the rest of the season and avoid the drop 
obviously Wigan did catch up slightly with their point they picked up in midweek but even with that I think that Stoke probably will go on to survive but this is a decent chance to be playing QPR who aren't particularly playing great at the moment. It's ever since they had that game against Leeds they've fallen off really. Without winning their last four matches they've lost three of them. They drew in midweek goalless against Swansea. Jordan Hugel doesn't seem to find himself in a great run of form at the moment uh, compared to the start of the season. He had a great chance to take the lead for QPR in midweek but plays that one over the bar when he went through on goal. For this one I'm edging towards Stoke you know. Uh, Stoke do have a couple of injuries coming into this one. I think Verlinden's now going to be out for the entire season which is a bit of a blow for them. James McLean's also going to be out for a few weeks as well but I'm edging towards Stoke. Tyrus Campbell I thought was looking really lively in midweek and I feel like they may just edge this one by one goal to nil. And then we're wrapping today up with Sheffield Wednesday going up against Reading. We said it earlier on the video that Hull probably found themselves on the worst run of form in the league but these two will give them a run for their money at the moment. Each of them have only won one of their last nine matches in the championship. Sheffield Wednesday especially found themselves on an awful run of form lately. They lost in midweek 1-0 against Luton Town. Another really shoddy performance where it's a lack of desire and belief from the Wednesday players at the moment and it's a total contrast to what we were seeing you know of the resilience of this guy amongst side earlier on this season you know at the start of the year they were right up in there in the top six chase they now found themselves nine points off the playoffs and the drop of in form has been absolutely staggering Reading find themselves in a bit of a frustrating situation at the moment injuries haven't helped them along this season but they have led in their last three matches and have ultimately failed to win any of them the game they had in midweek was against West Brom albeit against a, you know a very informed side West Brom so it's a decent chance for either of these two to get back to winning ways in this one but I feel like they've both forgotten how to win so for that reason I'm going to go for a 1-1 draw and FIFA's going to agree with me. But guys there you have it there are my championship score predictions for what I fancy to happen this weekend so as always do get your thoughts in the comments down below as to what you think is going to happen this weekend I'm interested to see what you guys are saying. But apart from that that will not wrap it up for today's video so thank you so much for watching if you did go on to enjoy make sure you leave a like it is always massively appreciated make sure you subscribe subscribe for a bit of regular championship content. But apart from that, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.